Judges, chapter 13. Another good chapter to attack religion with. Read the Bible. And the children of Israel did evil and again in the sight of the Lord. Up and down, up and down. Yet that's the story of our own life. We do good, we do wicked. All have sinned. I'm sure the glory of God. But notice it done evil in the sight of the Lord in Proverbs 15 3 says, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God sees what you're doing. Now, I don't care if you're doing it in a darkened room. The most darkened room ever you can have is, no, is, is not going to prevent God from seeing it. And the Lord delivered them unto the hands of the Philistines 40 years. Hey, just take this whole time of judges. It's not just one week, one month. Forty years they got, they're paying for their sin. And we're going to look at a birth of a child, and yet it's going to take many years for this child. And then was a certain man, a certain man, that's a very important two words in the Bible, of Zorah, the family of the Danites. The Danites, they're, they're kind of weird tribe there. Dan's the first proxy of Rachel unable to have a child given over to Jacob, her handmaid, as you would have Hagar and Ishmael. That proxy of the handmaids in the, in the Bible don't turn out good, but whose name was Marona? Manoa, you know, names don't have to be per, uh, exact. And his wife was barren and bare not. Well, here's one of the women that are barren. And believe it or not, these barren women pictured their children, pictured Jesus Christ. And the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, that is Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Before he was conceived in the womb of Mary, before he took on flesh, the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. And said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren. Isn't God great? You know, he walked up, he walked, someone who's old in age. You know, you're old and you're full of days. Yeah, Lord, thank you very much. And you're barren. I bet you she really, you think she really enjoyed that, that new. Here's this man comes walking up to her. You know, you're old and barren. And bear is not. That's what barren means. You don't, can't bear any child. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. That's throughout the whole Bible. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, grape juice, nor strong drink, fermented grape juice. So there's a difference between wine and alcoholic wine. Don't even drink grape juice. And eat not any unclean thing and that's back in the law she would have to know what the law says no pork no seafood unless it has scales for lo thou shalt conceive shalt conceive she hasn't conceived yet and bear a son and no razor shall come on his head so no haircuts it's gonna be long hair and this is where they would get the hippies. You know, we're a hippie for Jesus. We, we don't shave our hair. For the child shall be a Nazarite. You're a hippie. You're not, you're not a Nazarite. Nazarites were Jewish people. Let's go to number 6-2. Let's see what a Nazarite was. And Jesus Christ was not a Nazarite. He came from Nazareth. Number 6-2, speak unto the children of Israel, not Gentiles, and say unto them, when either man or woman, oh, could be either or, shall separate themselves, all right, I'm trying to think of the word, the Bible separation, um, can't think of it right now, but you're going to give yourself to the Lord. You're going to have a special purpose, special life for God. Sanctify. Therefore, separate themselves to a vow. 
how the Bible prevents you from making vows. But here, you want to do it. You better know what you're going to do, and you better fulfill it to the most. A vow of a Nazarite to be separated, to separate themselves unto the Lord. Now, this child that's going to be born, we're going to read a little bit further in Numbers, but this, this child is not the vow. This child has no way, has he even been conceived yet? And God said he's going to be a Nazarite. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. Well, the angel of the Lord passes that on to his mother through the womb. This child is going to be such a Nazarite even in the womb. No wine and strong drink. He shall drink no vinegar of wine, nor vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquors of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dry. And he goes on with the rules and, and regulation for the Nazarites. So this child, a Nazarite of God, even from the womb. And so what are you going to say if, if there's no life in the womb? God says to his mother, verse 4, no, drink no wine nor strong drink. When that child is in your womb, he's a Nazarite. And spoken of as the oath of a Nazarite. And people say, well, that's not life. That's ridiculous. That womb is life. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. And we finish that up in number six. The child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Well, it's got to be life. And we are in a day and age that says that the children of Israel did evil and again the sight of the Lord. Look, God cannot choose any living man that is breathing to do his word. He has to choose a man that hasn't even been born yet. How's that? He's got to go to a woman who is barren, who has not conceived, and say, that child is going to be conceived. In order to help my people Israel, you better bow that child to be a Nazarite. No wine, no strong drink. Before he's conceived, I can't find any other man to fill his shoes. How's that? In the time of Noah, God could only find eight people that would get in that ark. With the time of Lot in Sodom, he could only find really one man that would come out of that city out of his own will. Even then, he had to stretch him and pull him. And he shall begin, begin to deliver out of the hand of Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. So he's not going to finish. He he starts. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying. A woman of God came unto me. That's not correct. We saw in verse 3, that's the angel. She says, a man, a male came to me. And we'll get more. This chapter 13 deals much on angels. A man of God came unto me. And his... Continents. Modern Bibles change that, you know, to it. Was like the countenance of an angel of God. He looked like an angel, and it was a male. Very terrible. And what that means there, it inspired terror. The face of this angel of God made you afraid. The countenance, the lightning, the fixtures of his face made you, this is no ordinary man, but he's a man. But I asked him not whence he was. I didn't you know where'd you come from. Neither told me. Neither told he. Neither told he me his name. Now when this angel shows up and people start questioning him his name, he will not answer. And we're going to look at that a little bit further. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive. Not conceived yet. And bear a son. Oh, you have a 50-50 chance. I don't know what the conceivement of a woman, but it is for some women, or sometimes the man, or both, that conceivement, that could be a very high or low percentage, but can conceive, and in 50-50, he's going to have a son. And now drink, now, 
before you even could see. Now, drink. No wine, nor strong drink. Now look what he said in verse 4. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink. He says, now therefore. And she says, exactly, now. And she quotes completely what he says. Now drink no wine, nor strong drink. Neither eat any unclean thing. That's exactly what he said. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Well, she added a little bit to his entire life. Now, this child is going to do things that will end that Nazarite vow. But he's got a long life ministry like John the Baptist. Because the same thing is almost prescribed to Elizabeth. Don't drink any wine. You better watch your diet. And then the son, John the Baptist, never has any wine or strong drink. So, verse 8. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, seeks God, and said, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, let the man of God, man of God, whom thou didst send come again unto us. Teach us. What we shall do unto the child that shall be born. He's taking control of his house. Now, he's not calling his wife a liar, but he's saying, God, I'm in charge of this house. I'm the man. Please send this guy back so he can explain to me. And I will take charge of this house for that child. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Noah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold the man. Now look at verse 6. A man. Verse 10. The man. You know when that happened else about Jesus? No, actually, even before that. When we talk about the Passover lamb. Get yourself a lamb. Make sure it's your lamb. Your, the lamb. Also the, woman at the, well. the woman at the well. So run this back to Exodus chapter 2, which we won't do. But the a man, the man, or the angel of God, came again unto the woman as she said, uh, verse 10. The man has appeared unto me that came, that came unto me the other day. So it's a man. Manoah rose and went after his wife. She's running ahead of him. He's chasing her. And came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? He said, I am. And Manoah said, Let now thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? How shall we, how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine. That's the vow of the Nazarite. First, chapter number, Numbers chapter 6. No raisins, no grapes, no drink, or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All I have commanded her, let her observe. And notice the free will. She may not eat. And if she decides to say, no, God will go find somebody else. He is not forcing her to have this diet. Like, you know, a woman goes to a doctor, she's pregnant, and the doctor will say, hey, so take these pills, I suggest, I suggest you to do this, I suggest you to stop doing that. It's up to you. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain, that's the first time that word shows up, detain thee, until we have made ready a kid for thee. I'm going to bring you a sacrifice, a goat. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, though thou detain me, 
I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now this is Jesus Christ before he's born. This is Jesus Christ as an angel coming to the Old Testament saints. And Jehovah Witnesses will have fun with this one. But I still believe God is Jesus and Jesus is God. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. He has no idea. This thing, it's got a face. It's got a terrible face. It's not just a human, but it's a man. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, that he thought it was just an angel. He doesn't realize it's the angel. Now that he said, you know, I can't eat that bread. What is thy name? That when they when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. But well, what angel spoke unto us? The angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou after my name? Seeing it is secret. Now let's go to Deuteronomy, I mean Genesis 32, 29. Genesis 32, 29. This is very important about Jesus Christ. Genesis 32, 29. And this will explain who and what's going on here. In Genesis 32 and it's prescribed also write down Hosea chapter 12 verse 3 and 4 Hosea 12 3 and 4 but let's look at verse 29 in Genesis and Jacob asked him this is the man he's, he's wrestling with a man walks up to, to Jacob and they get into a wrestle verse 24 and Jacob was left alone and there he wrestled a man A man in verse 29 Jacob asked him and said tell me I pray thee thy name and he said wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name and he blessed him there they keep asking this character what's your name he goes I'm not answering that name I'm not gonna tell you it's a secret Hosea 12 3 Hosea 12.3 Daniel Hosea Hosea 12.3 Open my Bible there What did I say? What verse was it? 3 Alright Hosea 12, 3 and 4. Let's get scripture to scripture and we'll go to another place in the Bible. Hosea 12, 3. And it's talking about Jacob, verse 2. And he took his brother by the heel in the womb, that's Jacob, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplications unto him. He found him in Bethel and there he spake with us. Jacob wrestled with, a, with an angel in Genesis 12, 3, and 4. And that was at Bethel. So Hosea tells us that's an angel. And the name, Revelation 19. And much later on you find Revelation 19. His name. Now, I always start in verse 11 because I love verse 11 all the way through 16. 1911. Looking at the name. A name that's going to be missing in the tribulation period. Because notice the Bible says, I believe it's Hosea, that there's going to be a famine of the word. That will show up here. Not a food, the word. Remember 1911, and I saw heaven open, 
behold a white horse and he that sat on him upon him was called faithful f capitalized and true t capitalized and in righteousness does he judge and make war wow thou shalt not kill his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself look at that that's jacob that's manoah that's the nation of israel they don't know who this name is and the people of the earth when he comes they don't know his name why and he was clothed with a vesture dip in blood and his name they didn't know this name is called the word of god well, the word of God is not going strong in the tribulation period. The Jews do not have the word of God because they stop at Malachi or Second Chronicles where their Bible order. They don't go Matthew to Revelation. So they don't have a complete Bible. They're not going to see John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. They don't see 1 John 5.7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So they don't know. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And early in the history of Israel, they don't know his name. And later on in the history, in the future, in our history, but in the future of Israel, they don't know his name. Verse 19, so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered upon the rock. <laughs> That's interesting. Upon a rock unto the Lord Jehovah and the angel did wondrously he picks up on the offering you realize what Jesus Christ did according to Isaiah 53 for my souls for my iniquity for my sins was wondrously and approved by God and Manoah and his wife looked on what's he doing for it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar. See, that rock was untouched, was made an altar. That the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on. Does that remind you of something? Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Who says you can't find Jesus in the Old Testament? He's all over the place. Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Acts 1.8. Jesus Christ. After the death, burial, and resurrection. 40 days. Well, this shy of 40 days. On the earth. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Smyrna and unto the other parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld Manoah and his wife, he was taken up, Manoah and his wife. And a cloud received them, okay, there's no cloud, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, Manoah and his wife, the whole two men stood by with white apparel, and then they speak to the side. Look at that. That's Judges 13. Again, verse 20 of Judges. It came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven. There was no flame in, in in uh, Acts 1, for off the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame out of the altar, and Noah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. And Manoah he never appeared again to Peter, James, John, and all the apostles. The next time he comes for the church, they're dead. They're in the ground, buried. They'll come on the ground to see Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Then Manuah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. Do you realize that moment when the rapture, or at the moment of the rapture, 
When all Christians are caught up, whether dead or alive, that moment you're going to know that's Jesus. Wow, isn't it? Judges 13 isn't an interesting chapter that we see Jesus. <laughs> we won't see Jesus until we see Jesus. And when we know it's Jesus, we know it's the angel of the Lord. For me, see, he said, and Manuah knew it was an angel of the Lord. No, he's the angel of the Lord. There are going to be some Christians that are going to be caught up in the rapture and they're going to, what's going on? They won't have the freakiest idea what's going on. Thanks to their pastors. They think Jesus will look totally something different than what the Bible says Jesus is going to look like. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen who have they seen throughout this whole chapter? And who did he say it was? He's not a Jehovah Witness. Oh, look at that. He says, we've seen God. And who's the subject? The angel of the Lord. Manoah said, Holy Spirit recorded, I like that, you've seen God. And you don't, you know, don't go run and show you, because they'll say that's not the angel of the Lord, it's not ba 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 all kinds of things and Jesus is Michael and that other garbage he's frightened he's scared but his wife said unto him if the Lord Jehovah has were pleased to kill us first of all we're not dead <laughs> that's kind of terror that, that, that just happened in front of him he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands you see, verse 19, he brought the meat offering. The angel of the Lord made it a burnt offering by his flame. Jesus Christ was our burnt offering by going into hell and depositing our sins. And a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things. Nor as at this time has told us such such things as these. Listen, he wouldn't have told me I was going to be pregnant and I have to do all this if he's done, and then we're not dead. And that statement to be dead is that's how much he feared God. And a woman bare a son between 23 and 24. That's more than nine months. Sometimes between two verses, it could be a month, it could be two months, it could be a year, it could be years. Here, between 23 and 24, and this wouldn't answer a lot of your questions in the Bible, you don't know what time lapsed. We don't know how long it took her to conceive, but we do know it's nine months. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Oh, there's Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zora and his soul. So here's a child being used as he's grown by the Holy Spirit of God. Almost near type of, of John the Baptist, but as we get into chapter 14, uh, you'll see not total. But here's a remarkable character. Here's a remarkable statement of Jesus Christ in chapter 13. 